So this is part two of the three antenna build that I'm building for a friend of mine for his uh, first person view setup and what I'm going to be building here is a smaller helical antenna, it's going to be a four turn helical antenna. So I'm going to be using some of this pipe again that I used in the last video, the uh, water pipe which is pretty standard, it's uh, 15 millimeters diameter which is just perfect for this. Um, you're going to have to download the template which will be a link in the description and I've already cut the template uh, appropriate so uh, we've got a four turn helical antenna here I've got the uh, actual back reflector cut out here and this time I'm going to be using for the back reflector some copper clad board because I'm going to be connecting this one up using uh, this pigtail here I'm going to be cutting it off and I'm going to need to be able to solder to this so I can't use aluminium this time for the actual cover of the antenna I'm going to be using a yoghurt pot and you can use uh, various sizes that they, they, they all seem to have a similar sort of diameter but one thing you want to check is the depth so the depth of this one is uh, going to be fine for the four turn so here's a different one again similar sort of diameter but um, you wouldn't be able to get a four turn in that one here I've got another one with a bigger one so you'd have to cut out a bigger back reflector for this one but um, you can obviously you can fit that in there as well if you wanted to so uh, just have a look around uh, different yoghurt pots and uh, you'll find one that uh, will fit and you can use as a cover to uh, protect your helical antenna and of course we've got some copper wire here that I've uh, got from some uh, household electrical solid core wire and stripped it off is uh, 300 uh, millimeters long which is going to be more than enough for this build so just like we did with the uh, 10 turn one I've again took a PCB drill and drilled a small hole right at the beginning of this first turn put a little right angle bend in my copper wire here and it just holds it in place while we work it around but just remember to cut that bend off when you've finished so again just working it around it's a lot smaller this one so it's a lot easier to control so keeping it nice and tight applying quite a little bit of pressure with my thumb to work the coils around so I'm going to cut it off about here so I've got plenty to play with so then like in the last video just go around then and make sure that the coil is precisely over the black line and just use some clear tape to hold it in place basically you want to be able to look all the way around it and not see any of the black line when you've finished so sometimes you have to manipulate it a little bit to get the copper at the right angle And get your nail down the sides so it's firmly in place so I'm going to leave the coil alone for a moment and move on to the reflector on this antenna and what I've done I've got the PCB here and I've stuck it onto the opposite side where the copper is and I'm going to drill a small hole just here where it is on the template actually a little bit smaller than what's on this template because I want to fit this coaxial cable through and I'm going to solder the shield straight onto the copper PCB here and then we're going to have the centre conductor coming up and we'll be soldering it onto the actual coil here but we're also going to put a little metal shim on here in order to match the impedance to the coaxial cable so I've drilled the hole through just uh, wide enough to fit the coax through now how long you have this really depends on you and what kind of setup you've got. I'm actually going to leave this uh, at its maximum length here. So I'm going to have that much protruding from the back. I mean you could always have it a little bit shorter but um, you can't go too short because of the metal shim that's uh, on this SMA connector here. Um, you want to leave yourself a little bit of coax where you can strip back in order to attach the antenna to. But uh, I'm going to be leaving it quite long for this antenna. Now 
it's a good idea to put your coax through and then actually strip back here rather than trying to fiddle through with lots of little copper wires hanging out then trying to feed it through the little hole down here. So I've stripped back the coax here and I've kind of made a disc shape with the um, outside shield cable here and uh, we're going to solder directly onto the PCB like I've said and for the centre conductor I've left a little bit probably four millimetres of the actual insulator so we've uh, got no danger of touching the actual ground when it's in place because the last antenna we built we had this dielectric here that um, stopped us from touching the actual shield part on here and we'll just solder into this pin here which is also a solid pin this um, is not solid copper in these uh, pigtails so what we're going to have to do is tin that to make it a little bit stronger so just be careful when you're designing an antenna using a pigtail like this that you're not going to be touching your actual signal wire your centre conductor with your ground shield your outer core and also one mention uh, I want to say about um, this kind of uh, coaxial cable this is really really popular with um, model makers especially uh, if you're flying because you, you want to keep weight down but uh, you are sacrificing some of the shielding on uh, one of these it's um, a little bit more lossy than uh, proper LMR cable but uh, LMR cable has that much shielding in it it's uh, extremely rigid and it's got a lot more weight to it so we're kind of sacrificing that for uh, a little bit more lightness and flexibility but uh, this stuff is nowhere near as good as uh, an LMR low loss rated coaxial cable so what I've got now is a solid disc of copper wire and solder what I'm going to do I'm going to trim all these scraggly bits off here just to uh, tidy it up a little bit and then uh, we'll make them together so before I actually solder it's a good idea to check with your coil that it's all going to line up perfectly and if you remember from the last um, video with the 10 turn helical I said we've got this four four millimeter um, ridge here and that takes care of the uh, dielectric so we've got a nice gap between that and the shield so that's how much you want to strip back to so it lines up nicely like that so what I'm going to do is apply a bit of heat I shouldn't have to put any more solder on and uh, these two should uh, solder together nicely so I'm holding this with my fingers here giving it a pinch just so we've got some uh, downward pressure just apply a little bit of heat and get that solder to flow so we've got our little shim cut out and it's 15 millimeters long that way and five millimeters that way and basically like I said in the last video really important that uh, when you build any kind of helical antenna you have uh, a shim like this especially if you're using 50 ohm coax because it matches the impedance down to 50 ohms so basically we're going to solder the shim onto this bottom coil here and then we'll solder the pin the signal here to that side of the shim like that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some tin on this to make it a lot easier and also tin the uh, bottom coil because uh, it's only small and we want to use a soldering iron as uh, to keep it on there as little as possible because otherwise it will all heat up and it will all fall off so you have to be really really careful with the heat so it's been epoxied in place now and I've also soldered the signal wire to the metal shim there attached to the coils you can see that you want to basically make your metal shim bend around along with the coil don't have it straight so it wants to be bending around to keep that circular polarization in place so all that's left to do now is to put some epoxy around the rim of the yoghurt pot and then attach the yoghurt pot to the reflector 
then of course we've also got to tidy up the um, sides of our reflector we've got to uh, sand them down and get them nice and round and also I'm going to be attaching a bracket so we can attach this antenna to a tripod and because we're okay using metal screws on the back reflector like it's not like the last one where we're attaching on the side so it's going to be perfectly fine using a metal bracket this time as well so I've tidied all this edge up and sanded it all down nice and smooth and the brackets on there held in place with these two screws and nuts so uh, I think all that's left to do now is finish keying up all this with a little bit of uh, light emery paper and uh, we'll give it a uh, coat of paint so here's the four turn helichlor finished off and mounted on its tripod and as I said this is a three part video and on the next video we're going to be doing a uh, clover leaf antenna for the 5.8 GHz spectrum so I hope you enjoyed this and uh, you got something out of it if you did please give it a big thumbs up and I'll catch you for the next one